It's been raining for three days. What am I supposed to do? Sit here and wish the sun would shine and use this expensive camera for a paperweight? No, not on your life. There's things you can do. Come with me, I'll show you. You gotta take the camera, fool. So, what do you do on a rainy day? Well, you don't sit at your desk and mourn all day and wish it was sun was shining. What you do is, you practice. And that's what I did, and I want to show you how I did it. Now, obviously, today is not raining, and I shot the pictures yesterday, and I did that because I didn't want to get soaking wet. Uh, it was raining cats and dogs. But what I did, I came out on my deck, and I set my camera through the door, opened the door and set my camera so that it would be pretty close to the settings that I needed. And then I came out and I looked for some good shots to take of uh, some graphic design stuff, just practicing, playing, having a little fun with my camera uh, while I could. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I came out here and the first thing I saw was this flower. I'm not sure what kind of flower it is, but obviously it was soaking wet and water was dripping and running off of it. And I thought maybe, you know, there's some neat stuff going on there. Maybe I should take a look. And then I turned around and I looked at this uh, lawn chair here. Uh, and I took some pictures of the, the back of the chair here. There was raindrops all over it. And uh, it was kind of neat. And I just just having fun, just see what's going on. And then I walked out here, kind of hung close to the house, trying to get under the eaves so I wouldn't get soaking wet. Uh, and I took a picture of, uh, well, uh, I think it was this knot right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's getting kind of blown out because of the sun. But uh, a knotty board on my deck. Oh yeah, and look here. I don't know if you can tell or not, but uh, it rained uh, almost one inch yesterday. And then I got over here, and I put my camera up against the wall like this, and I took a picture of the bricks. All right. And so that's what I did yesterday. I took about 25 pictures. Uh, and I only got four that I think are worthy of one of each area, worthy of looking at. And I'll show you what I what I did with them, what I took, how I took them. And uh, so let's go back in. And what we're going to do now, we practiced on the computer. So let's go take a look. Okay, we had a little fun shooting some pictures. Remember, we're just practicing. We're not trying to get a, a composition that we're going to hang on the wall. And now we're inside. We're going to take a look at them on the computer. And, and I've adjusted some of them a little bit uh, and had some fun and, and learned some things as I practice on my computer with this program. Now I'm using uh, Aftershot Pro 3, which is a program that uh, deals with raw pictures. And then you export those from Aftershot uh, to PaintShop Pro, and uh, from there they became JPEG. Now I did export some as TIFF files just to see what TIFF files were all about, and I couldn't tell any difference between a TIFF and a JPEG as far as the looks concerned. But the JPEG files are about four or five megabyte, and the TIFF files run anywhere from 75 to 100 meg. So uh, I deleted them pretty quickly. I have about 10 or 12 pictures here, and I was over a gig already. So uh, I got rid of all the TIFF files. I don't see any advantage in those at all. So let's take a look at the pictures. Uh, here's the first one uh, that we shot. And this is untouched. This is just brought down from uh, after shot into paint shop as a JPEG file. And here's what it looks like. Uh, it's got a lot of nice detail, a lot of nice definition. But then I, I did a little... Uh, work on it and I, I got this picture. It has a lot more depth and, and what I did I used uh, a thing called tone mapping and tone mapping uh, works kind of like HDR but not exactly. It's just a way to treat your pictures. Uh, let's just look at both pictures here together as you can see uh, and the one on the right has been tone mapped 
and the one on the left is a JPEG file. And you can see a lot of detail in the one on the right that you can't see in the one on the left. It just kind of enhances the picture and brings it out. Okay, the next picture. Uh, this one was shot at a 50th of a second. F25 ISO 100. Uh, pretty nice picture. It's a JPEG file. Uh, you can see it was raining. You can see all the raindrops on it. It looks pretty good. Just a straight transfer over. But then I tone mapped it a little bit too. And now you can see a lot more uh, contrast in the picture with the tone mapping. And uh, I did just a little bit. Uh, raised up the uh, saturation just a hair. Not a whole lot. Just a hair just to see what it looked like. And uh, here's the two pictures together. And uh, obviously the one on the right uh, looks a lot better. It's a much nicer picture. Uh, has a lot more depth, a lot more color. Uh, the rain really shows up. It, it makes a pretty nice picture. Next picture, I remember I said I was just going to take a picture of a brick wall. And I did, and that's what it looks like, uh, just as it was shot. And so, but this really needed help. Otherwise, it's just just going to be a brick wall. And remember, we're practicing to learn things. Okay, that's that's the reason why we go to the program for practice, just to learn things, just to manipulate a picture that doesn't mean anything to you, so that you can begin to understand how to use the program that you have. And here's what I did to it. I flipped it uh, horizontally. Uh, I did a lot of tone mapping here on it. And then I what they call pinch. And as you can see, it, it kind of curves. It kind of curves up. And it's called pinching. And I didn't know I could do that, so I learned that. And then you'll see how the top is darker than the bottom. And that was a graduated filler. I didn't know I had that in the program. So I'm learning things as I go here. And it, it made kind of a neat picture. Uh, looks more like a Mars landscape than it does a brick wall. Here's the two together. As you can see, the one on the left is just a brick wall. You know, that's the kind of picture Acme Brick would take to show their customer for color. Uh, the one on the right, though, uh, is totally different. Totally different. And it, it's just good practice to find out what we're doing here. The next picture was a picture of the board. And it looks like a plain board that needs some paint. But look at this. I did a whole lot of excessive tone mapping here. I really brought it up. And when you tone map to the extreme, well, you'll get a variation in colors. You get aberration in color, chromatic aberration in color. And it had a, a lot of pink in it. And uh, I learned how to take the chromatic aberrations out, some of them anyway, uh, and so I removed a lot of pink. It was real pink uh, before I got done with it. And then I learned how to put some highlights on it and some shadows. It looks like it's uh, sun shining on it through a window. And that's, that's a wholly new thing for me. I didn't know I could do this. And there's what the two looked like together. You know, you know, Again, it's not something to hang on the wall, but I learned something by doing this. And that's what, that's what I was trying to do, just have some fun with some pictures that had no meaning at all, and just see what I could do with them to enhance them, to make them a photograph that's not just a snapshot of something that means nothing. I think you get my point here. Uh, this was the back of the lawn chair, and my focus was on the red dot. It was a piece of foil laying on the deck. Uh, There's a little foil heart. Uh, I don't know how it got there, but it was laying there. I didn't put it there. It was just there. And so I took a picture of it and I tried to get it centered in the things, uh, in, the, in the little holes of the back of the chair. You see the raindrops on it and the color is totally off. I don't know how that happened, but the color is totally off. It's a dark hunter green and this is a blue. And how that happened and why that happened, I don't know. But I couldn't fix it, so I let it go. But 
this once again needed to do something it's just a nothing picture and this is what I did with it now, I didn't convert it to black and white this is actually not black and white it's called uh, uh, silverizing now it makes it black and white but it's called silverizing and as you can see it's it's totally different uh, and I don't know what you do with a picture like this however I have a friend whose house is decorated uh, in modern and he has a lot of chrome uh, the furniture is trimmed in chrome and pictures are in chrome and there's chrome everywhere and he saw it and he says you know I'd like to have this in a nice chrome frame about 11 by 14 it fit real neat on my wall now <laughs> I don't want that on my wall but uh, anyway uh, someone might appreciate it I guess but uh, and then you see the uh, two pictures together and obviously the one on the left is totally meaningless and the one on the right is different well we had some fun and I think that uh, uh, the practice was good for me and, and I hope that you learn that you know when it's raining and when you're landlocked you can't get out of the house or whatever that you know, just walk around the house take some pictures uh, take some pictures of things that you know you're not going to save you don't want to save them but so that you can practice on you know learn how to use your camera uh, learn what all the dials and knobs are for and then put it on your computer and and learn your program so that when you do take a picture that is meaningful and something you want to keep uh, you'll get a good shot out of the camera but you'll also be able to manipulate it in post-processing to where it'll be something that you'll be proud of and want to hang on the wall so that's uh, that's my story for a rainy day and in the meantime you guys keep that shutter clicking